Hey, hello everyone, welcome to my little tutorial here on how I sculpt tabards for my black templars. Uh, for this one I've just focused on the below the belt bit as opposed to the chest or indomitus style belly bit of cloth. Uh, as you can see I've sort of scraped the eagle off this dude because that's what you do for black templars, even though I've done a pretty shit job with that one. Um, so here we just have a little piece of cardboard which I basically cut so that it will conform to the shape uh, of his belt once it's bent into shape. So I'm just sort of test fitting it here. It's just totally normal cardboard. Uh, if you can get sort of unlaminated or unpainted cardboard, it's best because then it soaks up the super glue later. Uh, no, sorry, it soaks up the super glue better, which will be relevant later on. You can see here I'm just sort of bending it into shape so that it'll fit nice and snugly underneath his belt because the tighter that fits in the better it will stick and the better your results will be later on with sculpting the green stuff into the curve. So here I'm still just checking the size and the shape of it to make sure I like the, the look of it because this pretty much defines uh, how large the tabard will end up being. I like to sort of bend it around a fair bit so it's a little bit softened, the cardboard itself is a bit softened, uh, which allows you to sort of create a more organic looking template on which to sculpt folds. Otherwise if it's just a completely flat piece of green stuff, I mean cloth doesn't really hang completely flat, that would look a bit weird. here and sort of playing with the idea of putting a, a fold into it. And there are a number of different ways you can approach this. If you sort of, for this guy, if you look at his pose, he's standing pretty straight on, so the cloth's probably going to be hanging straight down. So I'm not going to go for anything too dramatic in terms of uh, trying to convey movement in the cloth. But just looking at this, the cloth is just looking a little bit too wide and not quite centered. You can see that on uh, the right hand side there, my right, not the intercessor's right, uh, the cloth's further beyond the belt buckle than it is on the left. So obviously these things look best if they're centered. So to deal with that, I'm basically just going to trim some off the right hand side. And I probably successfully blunted my X-Acto knife there by cutting on the back of a tile, but whatever. Uh, so there we go. Now you can see it sort of sits much more centrally. In fact, they put it in frame. There we go. So now I've got a sort of a shape that I'm happy with and a size that I'm happy with. Obviously you can do whatever you want. You can do nice wide long cloths here. You can do shorter. You can do long draping things, but Basically, the, the cardboard cutout defines the edges of the loincloth, so yeah, just sort of figure out how you want it to look and cut that into shape. Now what I'm going to do, this is a very important step, uh, I've just got the cheapest super glue I could find, I think it was 10 for 3 bucks or something, and just soak the cardboard template in that. This does a couple of things. One, it stops it from absorbing any moisture over time, which would not be particularly good. And secondly, it obviously makes it nice and rigid so that you can actually sculpt green stuff on it without just bending it all over the place. So just leave that to set up for a minute. And this is a minute later. I'm just soaking the backside in superglue as well. 
So like I say, you want to stop any moisture from getting in there over time. Even though, you know, once you put paint on it, it should theoretically be okay, but you don't want to take any risks if you're spending, you know, an hour sculpting a long cloth or half an hour sculpting a long cloth. And once you bother to paint the guy, you know, you don't want anything screwing up since months down the road. And I'm just sort of focusing on the edges a little bit as well, because obviously in cardboard, because many layers, uh, they kind of open up while you're twisting it around to get the right shape. So if you soak them in super glue, then it soaks in nicely between those layers in the cardboard. Now while it's still just a little bit wet, I'm sticking it to the guy's torso. Uh, you can wait for it to dry completely before you do this and then just stick it on afterwards. It's entirely up to you. I was just feeling impatient, so I stuck it on there while the super glue was still wet, and it seems to have worked out just fine. What I'm doing here is basically just uh, using the tip of the X-Acto knife to make sure it's as snug as possible. The intercessors Thankfully have that little gap between their this crotch armour and the belt that you can sort of use to get a really nice tight fit between the cardboard and the model. Because obviously if the cardboard comes out too far, then it's not going to look like the cloth is coming out from under the belt. It's going to look like the cloth is you know, either in front of the belt or part of the belt, both of which would look pretty weird. So you just want to make sure it's nice and... Uh, snug and how it's fitting there. I uh, was just looking at the back here, I noticed there was a little spot that didn't have super glue on it, so I'm just kind of using a spare bit of cardboard to spread that over. Now it's probably also worth noting if you were just looking to do, you know, a bunch of guys and you weren't really that phased about having you know, A plus level folds sculpted onto all of them, you could probably get away with just doing this and then painting it up. It would look just as good as flat green stuff, maybe even better because you've got some texture from the cardboard, uh, which would sort of look, it might read like heavy cloth, especially with some faster painting techniques like a dry brush or sort of a wash or a contrast method. So if you're in a hurry, um, just go to the end of this step and you've pretty much got a makeshift tabard, especially if you play around with, you know, folding the cardboard or getting sort of shapes with it before you set it with super glue, you can probably actually get some pretty good looking results. But for me, I like sculpting everything with green stuff, so here we go. The first thing I'm going to do is with an X-Acto knife, just sort of remove some of the cardboard and super glue from immediately underneath the belt, because like I said before, you just want it to look like everything's, you know, you want it to look like it's tucked into the belt, so obviously it needs to sit less proud than the belt itself. So giving yourself as much space to work with as possible now will do you a lot of favours later on, because you still have to sculpt folds into this area. So if you've left yourself no space at all in which to work, you're going to have a very tough time making it look like the, the cloth is actually coming out from underneath the belt. See there's a nice little lip there, so we've got some room to work with. Now obviously, you know, because you'll be painting the cloth a different colour to the belt itself, you can get away with it sitting close enough to flush and it'll still read as separate material, but it's just nice uh, to have it look right before you start sculpting all your folds in there with green stuff. So all I'm doing here is basically flattening out the little piece of green stuff. You can see it's not a huge amount. Uh, just flattening it out so that it's roughly the same shape and size as the uh, cardboard template that we've glued onto the guy. 
but also is uniform in thickness. And that's pretty important because if you have bits of green stuff that are really thin, obviously when you try and sculpt folds into them, uh, there's not going to be enough material for the folds to actually come through. You'll just go straight through to the cardboard. That won't quite look right. So here we go. And as you can see, it's sort of not quite the right size. It's a bit short there. So just to make life easier on myself and stretching it out a bit. Don't worry about fingerprints at this very early stage. As, as you will see, we'll get rid of them pretty quickly. So there you go, it's just about the right size. If you've got a little bit of extra material down the bottom, that's no trouble, because that's basically where you get the most dramatic folds anyway. So now using the flat chisel style clay shaping tool, I'm just sort of pressing the green stuff into those little right up under his belt there. Basically just adding a, a uniform green stuff layer on top of the cardboard in the same shape. So the, the two most important things in this phase are, like I say, one, have it in the same shape as the cardboard and two, you really want to get it smooth at this stage. If you have fingerprints and stuff, or um, you know, if you have different levels of thickness in your green stuff across the cloth, here I'm just removing a little bit that's run over off the side of the cardboard, uh, just so that it doesn't you know, sit in his little leg grooves and obscure a bunch of detail. So here we go, I'm just smoothing that out. But yeah, if you have bits that are much thinner than other sections of the green stuff, you're going to end up with pretty whack end results when you try and actually sculpt folds in. So here I'm just smoothing everything out. So by the end of this stage we'll have a uniform layer of green stuff, no fingerprints, nothing like that. And even though a lot of the fingerprints would get removed as you sculpt in the folds, I find that keeping it as uh, as smooth as possible throughout the process just sort of gives you the best results. There's, there's nothing worse than if you sculpt in a fold or something, you're really happy with how it looks, you notice there's you know a little bit of fingerprint left over in it. You try and remove the fingerprints and in doing that you completely destroy all of your hard work. So don't do that, just smooth it out at this stage and try not to get any more fingerprints on it. As you can see there, that little corner is missing out a bit, so I'm just sort of dragging some material down and across into that corner area. that everything's nice and uniform. At this stage you should absolutely do with fresh green stuff. Um, it's much easier to get everything into one smooth layer when the green stuff's fairly soft because you know it's quite pliable. If you're trying to push semi-set green stuff around with a clay shaping tool, you're in for a shit of a time. just about filled in that little corner piece and going back over smoothing everything out smoothing up the bottom as well so everything's just sitting flush with the edges of the cardboard now at this stage once everything's kind of smooth you can leave this to set for 15-30 minutes if you want I like doing everything um, 
while the green stuff's still fairly pliable just because it's quicker, but especially if you're you know, still pretty new to this process, having slightly more set green stuff will mean you're less likely to smush and destroy your folds uh, as you go through the process. So feel free to let it set for 20 minutes or so at this stage. I'm just going to jump straight into the sculpting. So for this one, we're going to use the pointy chisel tool. I don't know what the technical term is, but that seems descriptive enough. And with that, we're basically just going to draw in the lines which are going to become our folds later on. So here I'm just sort of messing around creating a bit of an indent because the top fold can be a bit of a bugger to sculpt in. So I find that creating this little indent first up can sometimes help. I think I go back over this area later on so it doesn't really end up doing anything for me here, but nonetheless, I'm going to give it a shot. And the other thing that does, I guess, is push a little bit more material away from that join between the cardboard backing and the belt, or the green stuff and the belt. Uh, here's where we get into the important stuff, so naturally I'm floating out of frame, so you can't see what I'm doing. But I'm just drawing in the line. So we've got one sort of um, pretty obtuse triangle up the top there. That will make up the top fold. Then a second triangle, which is getting a little bit more acute, below it. That will make up the sort of intermediate fold. And I like to have this one not quite joined together. It sort of creates a bit more natural flow and then two lines which basically run down the outside which you can see there and they're going to turn into the two major folds that sort of run all the way down to the bottom and this template you can use for pretty much every flat hanging cloth when you start getting into cloth with movement in it, it gets a bit more complicated uh, you've got to start looking at sort of reference images and copying some GW or Forge World sculpts to see what they've done. But this is just sort of the basic design that you can use on most of you guys. And there you go. So you see we've sort of drawn in all of the folds there. And that gives us a nice blueprint so that we're not just guessing while we go uh, sculpting the rest of this. Now we're going to switch to the tool that we'll pretty much use for the rest of this process, which is the uh, pointy round thing. And because of the shape of it, basically, when you get into the folds with it, you end up with a finer point, which naturally moves out to a, a wider, a sort of wider area, which kind of, you know, imitates how cloth looks naturally, so that's handy. So you can see here I'm sort of going the the pointy end of the tool is towards the part of the fold that I want finer, and the wider end of the tool is towards the part of the fold which sort of opens up. And this way it just naturally blends from creased cloth into smooth cloth. Once again, apologize for the being out of frame here. Basically, um, I'm just setting the foundation, there we go. You can actually see what I'm doing. So for that second fold, I go a little bit further down on one side than the other. So it kind of looks like the, um, the cloth is a bit more dynamic. You know, it's not just triangles stacked on top of each other. It actually starts to look like, like folds. And for the two outer ones, Now you want to be pressing quite light up the top there because this is where you're trying to create sharp, defined lines. You don't want to be moving too much material around. So I'm pressing quite lightly up here. And then you 
you can't see what I'm doing here, but basically I'm just running down the uh, down that line that we pre-traced in order to create one large fold going from the top to the bottom of the cloth. There we go. Now it's um, it's a bit gross, but the way I stop the tool from sticking to the green stuff is with spit, because like water water doesn't do a hell of a lot there. Um, Spit just seems to work far better as lubricant. I'm sure if you wanted to use like a, you know, oil or something like that. Uh, if you don't want to keep sticking your tools in your mouth, then that'd work too. But I've already got the habit of sticking paintbrushes in my mouth all the time. So why not just transfer that over to green stuff sculpting? And here I'm just using the pointy chisel tool to sort of shove everything or gently persuade everything back into place to keep the edges of that cloth nice and defined. So there's nothing worse than if sort of, you know, it looks like the cloth just blends into the armor next to it. That's not really, you know, you want it to blend into the area under the belt, but you want to keep nice, sharp, defined lines between what is that loin cloth and what isn't that loin cloth as it sort of runs down. So make sure you remove any material sort of blends those two together and that will really help the illusion. So here I'm basically just trying to keep the uh, the side of the cloth straight. While I'm sculpting in some of the finer lines. This is kind of a bit of a trial and error process with every tablet that you sculpt. You know, you'll, you'll do a fold and you'll think, yeah, it looks pretty good. Come back to it later. Maybe it doesn't gel so well with the rest of the folds you've sculpted in. You might have to change it around. So I think the first one of these that I did took me like an hour, hour and 20 minutes or something like that. So it's not a quick process. In order to keep all these uh, folds and lines smooth, I basically always come in with the the tool held you know, at an angle, uh, sort of well, quite a shallow angle compared to the the green stuff that I'm working with. So it's sort of uh, mostly using the side of the tool, never really the point. Now at this stage, I mean, this basically looks um, good enough that if you're doing a squad, I don't think anyone would really notice the difference. So you could absolutely get it to here and then stop. And if you have 10 of these guys stand together, it'll look pretty great. But there's just sort of some some finishing touches and some sort of last details and things that you can do. You know, if this was a, a lieutenant or a captain or something, you know, more of a centerpiece model, some ways to really make this cloth pop a bit more. And one of those is to really define those top folds. So they're going to be, yeah, that's where most of the interesting stuff is happening. That's where the, the cloth has come out from under the belt. So it's going to be its most folded there. So you want that to be nice and sharp. But then by sort of, yeah, pressing and turning the tool in such a way, you can, you can see there, I've sort of smoothed that, uh, smoothed that fold so that it's a gentle curve down in between the, the sharpest triangle at the top and then the fold on the side. So it kind of 
it starts to look a bit natural, which is obviously what you're going for. And a fair bit of this is honestly me just being fussy and sort of going over stuff that doesn't necessarily need to be gone over, but as you do more and more of these, you'll get an eye for what you like the look of and what you don't like the look of. So I think some of these top triangles or these top folds just weren't quite looking up to snuff. Uh, not that you can tell that because I'm not in bloody frame again. There we go. So I'm just really trying to get that, that cascading look, I guess. You know, it looks, looks way more epic. And just sort of a, a flat piece of green stuff with a thumbprint in the middle of it. And it's a lot more fun to paint too. Now here I'm sort of focusing right up in the corners where it kind of inserts into the belt there. But to be honest, if I screw this bit up, most of the time I just stick a purity seal or some little bit and bob there. And that works absolutely fine. A lot of my models, if you see like a, you know, skull on a chain hanging down on the tabards because the area where the skull is sitting looked like shit, so I wanted to cover it up. And there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing that. So you can see by sort of letting the, the tip of the tool bend a bit and sort of um, you know, curving it as I'm tracing along these lines, you can change, subtly change the shape of the fold so that it's as natural looking as possible. Still just focusing on the the insertion points up there where the the folds are at their thinnest, the creases are sort of at their sharpest. So that's where, you know, if you're doing a few layers of uh, highlight on this, that's where you'll be doing your extreme edge highlights and they'll sort of pop quite nicely if the crease itself is fairly sharp. Sort of a, another thing that I'm also doing uh, throughout this is I'm always resting my um, you know, ring finger there on either the foot of the intercessor, which is quite a fair way away from the, the green stuff itself, or on another one of my fingers so that I never inadvertently sort of rest it on the green stuff itself, because that is absolutely tragic when you've gone all the way through sculpting a bunch of folds on something then realise you've left a dirty great thumbprint in it. So if you have sort of a couple of areas that you automatically go to rest your, uh, you know, your, your tool hand, your sculpting hand onto, then that makes it much less likely that you'll inadvertently uh, ruin all your good work. So I'm just test fitting to make sure that this will actually fit on the base because you know it's possible that you could have a little bit of overhang and the uh, green stuff 
is too long for his legs and he won't fit in his base properly. Which can look quite interesting if you sort of sculpt it to be laying on the ground, but it's good to know that before it's dry. So once again I'm just going in and retracing all these lines. Very gentle with the tool at this stage. Just really finalising these these curves, smoothing everything out. Smooth is sort of the, the name of the game. So now I'm going to the back of this pointy tool, not the front. The back of it is actually quite nice and smooth. So you can use it just to Yeah, just sort of run it through those folds that you've got. Smooth everything out. Make sure you're out of frame when you're doing this. But all I'm doing here is smoothing out curves so you're not really missing anything. go and he's back. So I'm just running the back of it very gently along those top creases, just sharpening them up. Now if you sort of like where the folds are at, you can see I've sort of squished a fold there. That's alright, it's easily fixed. Go through and put it back. If you sort of feel like you like where all the folds are at, but maybe they could be a bit smoother or a bit sharper, but you're not confident in going in and fixing them while the green stuff is quite soft, you can always let this set for an hour, two, three hours, then go back in with sort of a, a wet clay shaper, and the green stuff will hold its shape um, quite well, so you can go through and smooth it out without destroying all your good work. And here I'm just sort of adding some final little touches down the bottom there, putting a little bit of a swish at the end, nothing too fancy, and just sort of smoothing off the bottom. And I reckon uh, she's done. Cheers.